Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we are here at the Kennedy Space Center. And I want to give you a little tour of what's going on here at the Space Center and uh, some of the things that are changing as a result of all these uh, this new move to commercial flight and also NASA's new deep space missions that they're working on. Now behind me is the Vehicle Assembly Building. This is one of the largest buildings in the world by volume. Uh, this is where they assembled the Apollo program rockets, the Saturn Vs, those enormous rockets that they built uh, right behind me. They stacked everything up in here. Uh, those rockets went up to the last door that you see up there. They're that high. Uh, by contrast, the space shuttle only went up to about the third door there, uh, so it really was a, almost half the size uh, that these huge rockets were. And they're working right now on refurbishing this building to get ready for the next big rocket, which is called the Space Launch System, which will once again uh, tower up to the very top of that building and will be quite a sight to see. Uh, the first mission will be kind of sending an unmanned uh, Ryan uh, capsule around the moon and back, and then eventually uh, they'll be putting astronauts on there either to go back to the moon or go to an asteroid and eventually on to Mars. So that's kind of where uh, everybody is ramping up here at the state at the uh, Space Center to get ready for that. Uh, there have been some changes to uh, some of the things around here. So uh, there's a bunch of little hangar buildings as you pull up to the Space Center that used to be for the space shuttles, which of course are now all in museums. So they've converted those uh, into uh, commercial space flight preparation areas. So a few of the commercial space flight providers like Boeing uh, will be using one of those buildings for getting their uh, new spacecraft available for uh, missions to the space station. The Department of Defense took over one of them as well. Uh, so they're doing some conversion there too. Uh, the launch pads are also undergoing some pretty extensive renovations. Here's a uh, shot of the shuttle pad. This is 39A, which is where uh, the last three missions that I saw uh, was lifted off from. Uh, so they're doing a lot to basically take down the old infrastructure, put in new infrastructure to support uh, SpaceX, which plans to launch their uh, three rocket heavy lift. It's a monster. It's got like 28 engines on it. It's going to be quite a sight to see. Uh, so they're getting ready for that. And of course, uh, the SLS will probably lift off from that pad as well. So kind of going from one use, one rocket, to multi-use, having much of different users on the pads here, which is uh, pretty neat to see. Uh, there are some still shuttle relics around, so uh, as we were driving back from the SpaceX launch pad, you can see the crawler uh, with the, sh uh, the shuttle mobile launch platform. Uh, big stuff, heavy stuff. They don't really be able to use a lot of that for the next mission. The crawler is probably still usable, of course, but the uh, platform that the shuttle lifted off from is no longer uh, going to be used. So they're probably going to just uh, take it apart and scrap it. Uh, behind me over here is the mobile launcher that will launch with the space launch system with the SLS. And what's going to happen on that platform is they will uh, construct the rocket uh, pretty much next to that tower. And then that will be uh, what gets taken out to the launch pad for launch. And I hope to be here when that happens. I think we're still a couple of years away from uh, seeing the launch of that particular rocket. But uh, when it does go up, it is going to be a spectacular sight. Eventually, it will be uh, more powerful than the Saturn V. So uh, we're talking about some serious horsepower coming out of uh, the Space Center here. Let's take a look around though at a few other buildings. So here's a look at the NASA press site on the far left is where uh, NASA TV is set up. They also have a little auditorium in there for press events and whatnot. Uh, in the center here is the press center, which is where most of the press work out of. Uh, some larger agencies actually have their own buildings. So on the right there, you see CBS. I think that's where Walter Cronkite broadcast from during the moon launches. So these buildings have been, or at least uh, these uh, spots have been reserved by these buildings for quite some time, maybe not the same building. On the left was a building uh, NBC was using for the final launch uh, there as well. And there's a smaller buildings here used by smaller outlets too. A lot of the Florida media uh, spend more time here, obviously, because there's some real economic impact to the space program. So this scene is probably very familiar because if you've ever watched a launch on television, this is what you were looking at, the clock and the flag. Uh, the clock has been upgraded, so they were using an Apollo-era clock for a very long time. Uh, they finally had a hard time getting all the parts they needed to keep it up and running, so they've replaced it with this new modern clock that has video and a lot more modern effects. They did keep the same base, I can see, as the old one, so at least that part still remains, but the, uh, the top part uh, is brand new. Uh, way off in the distance is pad 39A, where a lot of shuttle launches uh, lifted off from. The last three came out off of that pad, and even though it's three miles away, when you look at it with your eyes here, it is really close, and uh, you can see a lot of detail on those rockets when they lift off, and you can feel a lot. It was really something like this entire area just reverberates with uh, the sound of those uh, solid rocket boosters and main engines lifting those space shuttles up into orbit. It is truly remarkable to experience, and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, the Space Launch System, which is a much bigger rocket, uh, go off from here. I did speak with some uh, people who were here for some of the Saturn 
Saturn V launches during the Apollo era, and they said the ground shook uh, from the force of those rockets going up. In fact, one of the uh, roofs on the press uh, buildings back there collapsed because of all the shock waves coming down from that thing. It was quite a quite a scene here when those big ones went off, and I think we're going to see that again pretty soon. And you notice behind me there is water and a dock over there. That's not just for aesthetics. It's because they also used to bring in the space shuttle's fuel tank by barge from Louisiana. So it would dock in right there. Uh, they put it in that vehicle assembly building, uh, stack the shuttle, put it out on the crawler, and then have it go uh, three miles out to the launch pad. So pretty cool uh, little mechanism of using the oldest form of transportation we know, water, uh, to bring something to here to then send it into space. So pretty cool. So let's have a little tour of uh, the press center and some of the things that we can look at. Uh, during weekday events, there's sometimes the opportunities to kind of go in some of these buildings and see a little bit more. Uh, but today we'll just have to do a quick glance and then maybe on a future mission we'll uh, go in and take a little bit of a closer look at some of the things that are going on there because there was a lot of exciting stuff uh, happening right there in that building. This is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching.